Welcome back everybody. We got a pretty big fire ant nest here. We're gonna cast uh, using some molten aluminum. Uh, fire ants are an invasive species, so I have absolutely no problem with getting rid of these guys. Uh, molten aluminum is probably the quickest and most painless way to take care of these guys. Safe for the environment too. A lot better than using poison and stuff like that. So now here I've got a dam of sand around the ant hill. Uh, this sort of stops the aluminum from flowing out over the yard and it also uh, builds some head pressure that way you get a more complete casting uh, a little tip if you guys are trying to replicate this uh, what you want to do is if you got long grass especially like here you want to go around and sort of tap in the edges or else the aluminum can find little paths where the grass is holding up the sand here and you'll it'll flow out underneath uh, you'll lose a lot of aluminum that way and you won't get a good base here so here's why you always inspect your crucible before you use it i got a big crack running down it uh, and you can sort of see it on the inside here as well so it's cracked all the way through um, if i were to use this one and i while it's hot expands uh, it might be okay but if you pick it up and it fails You've got a bunch of molten aluminum in there hanging over your feet. Even if you have protection uh, PPE, it's still gonna be a bad day if this thing drops all that molten aluminum. Uh, so I'm gonna keep this one though. And in the future, I might do a video where I melt down lava rocks and make actual lava. And I got a new crucible over here. Uh, I already fired it once before, uh, but I'm still gonna take it up slow just because it's I barely use this one uh, make sure you drive off all that moisture all right so I've been letting it uh, heat up pretty slowly I've got it throttled down here uh, I don't want to blast this newish crucible with full heat after I haven't used it in a while. So I'm letting it warm up relatively slowly. It's still pretty hot in there. Uh, but now it's starting to glow uh, a little bit. Uh, so it's nice and warm. So I'm gonna go ahead and ramp up the heat and melt this a little bit. Always make sure to preheat your metal. Um, if you dump a piece of metal in there that's cold, it can freeze up all your metal, causing your crucible uh, to crack. It can also um, have a little bit of moisture on it, which can cause a small steam explosion uh, combined with molten aluminum, which is not good since molten aluminum everywhere. Uh, at best, it just messes up the inside of your furnace. At worst, uh, you get aluminum in your eye, you go blind. So always make sure to uh, properly preheat your uh, metal and also your uh, bolts. Uh, same thing can happen uh, where the aluminum can explode basically uh, and it will get sent flying everywhere. So this right here is uh, called dross and it's all the oxides from the aluminum. And then it can also be bits of contaminant like dirt and oils and stuff that just float to the surface. This all right here is clean aluminum so I'm just getting oxide. So now I'm going to heat it up a little bit more and pour it.
Yep, this is a big one. It took all that aluminum. So I'm gonna go ahead and quickly melt down some more. Try to get it to fuse up. And here is the second core. And I'm, I'm going to do like a half melt to finish off that base there but the casting should be complete basically now I'm just gonna make the base look prettier the final four i'm not gonna dross this one uh, just because it's going on the top and i can uh, do a better job while it's on top of the anthill And that's all there is to it. Now I'm gonna spread out the base a little bit better using my tongs. Just make it look a little neater around the edges. And then I'll finish up the surface a little bit better. Now I'm gonna let it solidify. And once it solidifies, I can take the hose to it, cool it down the rest of the way, and start digging her up. Look at that glass reflection there. That's incredible. So here I'm going to dig a uh, sort of large hole next to the casting and then slowly work my way towards the casting. That way I don't damage it. And then I'll work my way uh, a thin little line around the entire casting to get rid of any roots and stuff that might be holding it in. Uh, I've tried just prying it out of the ground a few times before and it's worked a couple times and hasn't worked a couple times. So. I'm just gonna play it safe from now on, I think. And I'll only try to do the safe way of digging a hole next to it and working my way in. So now I know where the tunnels are. I can work my way a little closer if the 
shovel and not have to worry about chipping a piece like this. I would have chipped if I had just gone straight in. So I've got it, uh, I'm starting to get it free here. It goes pretty deep. Um, so I started doing my small little circle around the whole thing, uh, trying to find where it's hooked into the wall and that sort of stuff. And I just used a hose for it. It's a pretty fast way to do it. It's almost like a pressure washer. Try and lift it out without breaking it. Yep. Wow, look at that. Now the trick here is trying to flip it without breaking it. Oh, broke it a little bit, but yeah, just a little small chunk came off. I'm happy with that. Wow, look at that. That's a crazy one. All right, let's go ahead and start cleaning this off. clean it off the rest of the way. So right here, there was a root that went all the way through the cast, but it was rotten inside. So it's completely hollow. The aluminum filled it up and it sort of left this aluminum tunnel. It's completely straight through the casting. It's even a little bit uh, detached from it. It's only attached at like one point somewhere in the middle here. So it wiggles as if it was completely separate, but Still pretty stuck in there. Rest of the casting is pretty neat though. All the way up at the top here, wherever the roots get really thin in the ground, because this is actually the very bottom of the anthill, the aluminum vaporizes the little tiny roots and makes these really small structures here. They're like super thin almost about this a little bit bigger than the size of hairs it's incredible how much detail you can get out of this <laughs> 